video. Today I'm going to be going over our top five tips for surviving a heat cycle. So Juno is currently on her third heat cycle and we've picked up a few uh, tricks to help get through it a little bit easier since it does last roughly three to four weeks depending on the dog you have. That's a huge chunk of time. So I feel like anything you can do to make it easier on yourself and for your dog, the better. If you wanna know our top five tips for getting through a heat cycle, keep watching. My first tip is going to be condition your dogs to the diapers. So get them before, hopefully you're being proactive and you can get diapers before uh, your dog goes into heat. I think I got Juno's around seven to eight months old because I wasn't sure when she was gonna go into heat. She ended up having her first heat cycle at about a year and a month. But I had been putting the diaper on her on and off for extended period of periods of time so that by the time we got to her first heat cycle, it wasn't like, what is this? And also, what is happening? <laughs> so she was already as used to the diaper as you can possibly get a dog. And then it wasn't as hard to put it on her and stuff like that. Um, since you're going to be taking it on and off a lot during those three to four weeks, it would just be really a lot easier on yourself if your dog was already pretty used to it and used to you putting it on and taking it off and so on. So that would be my tip number one, condition them to having a diaper on. Tip number two is using a panty liner inside the dog diaper. So I use the carefree regular sized panty liners and I do know that they sell uh, disposable dog diapers so it's definitely going to be your preference but for me I knew she was going to go through multiple heat cycles and if I could buy one pack of three, use three reusable dog diapers and continue to be able to use them that was more cost effective for me than buying disposable. So. Hers, like I said, came in a pack of three, and so that gives me enough time to wash them in between her wearing them. But using the panty liners has extended the time that she can wear them significantly because I can just change out the panty liner as needed instead of having to wash these. A big thing for me is that I personally think it keeps the smell down um, with the heat and all of that, and it just makes it so you don't have to do as much laundry. So. That has been a game changer, is adding a panty liner into the diaper to extend the amount of time that she can wear the same diaper and have it not be gross, basically. And for the panty liner, I place it right at the base of the tail hole, and I find that this is the best placement for it, for it to be useful. And it really, like I said, works super well for us and has definitely made the diaper life way easier. Tip number three for me is going to be scheduling. So Juno's on a pretty consistent schedule, um, mainly with potty breaks, and I feel like that's a big thing with the diaper is that I really don't wanna be taking it on and off constantly, just like she probably doesn't want me to have to take it on, on, on and off constantly either. So she basically goes to the bathroom in the morning, then the diaper goes back on, she goes to the bathroom at lunch, sometimes, sometimes not, just depends. Um, and then the diaper goes back on, same thing when I'm done working, diaper off, bathroom, diaper back on. That allows me to check the panty liner, see if it needs to be replaced or not, but she's also not pestering me to go outside at random times. I know exactly when she needs to go to the bathroom. Um, and yeah, I think that's really just a big thing is scheduling. Um, and I just don't wanna be taking it on and off all the time. Uh, she doesn't run this house. She doesn't decide when we do things. So that's why she's on a very strict schedule and it works extremely well for us, especially during heat cycles. Tip number four is exercise. Your dog still needs exercise during a heat cycle. Trust me, they will drive you crazy if you don't provide them with exercise, but you do need to be responsible. 
If you're gonna choose to not spay your pet and go through a heat cycle, you really, really, really need to be responsible. The last thing this world needs is any more unexpected litters. So that means no off-leash time and no time in areas where there are other off-leash dogs. We Now we have gone through a heat cycle in an apartment and two in a house. Obviously the house is much easier. We can go outside and play chuck it in the backyard and so on, but we did survive one just fine at an apartment too. It just means lots of leashed activities. So some of the things that we did when we were in the apartment where we'd go on really long walks. We actually still go on hikes during a heat cycle. I don't find that it's disturbing to anyone else, nor is it disturbing to us to be able to go on a hike and do things like that. We are, there was a park near our apartment um, that was a leashed, like you couldn't have dogs off leash. So we would go there, we'd play with her flirt pole, things like that is what we would do. Activities in the house, we still trained a lot. Um, we still train a lot now during a heat cycle. That's another really um, mind working activity that you can do with your dog during heat. Obviously if you have a house, it's much easier. You can go out in the backyard and play games and so on. But your dog does still need exercise during a heat cycle, but you really, really, really have to be responsible about it. So we are at final tip number five, and that is going to be diaper-free time. So for me, I think it's really important for the dog to be free from having to wear the diaper for an extended period of time throughout um, the day. The big thing mainly is that Juno sleeps in a crate at night um, during her heat cycle. So she is diaperless and she's free to self-clean, which is an extremely important portion of a dog being in heat is that they need to be able to self-clean and manage that portion of their body during that time and the diaper free time allows them to do that. So she's obviously created as well when I go out of the house for anything and so she's diaperless in that scenario too as well as when we're out on walks or out outside playing she's diaper free as well. So she really does get a good balance of diaper and no diaper and that is definitely something that I would recommend you guys do uh, during a heat cycle is just to really give your dog some of that free time. So it is the end of the evening, it is time for bed, so we will go outside one last time. Sit. Wait. Okay. So she is already in her crate because she knows. But she sleeps in her crate when she's in heat, uh, diaperless, so it gives her some diaper free time. And I have put towels in there instead of her dog bed because she gets them disgusting, really. But what this does is it gives her time to self clean, which is important. That's what she's doing now. Um, it is important that dogs have the opportunity to do that. And also, the diaper's just not insanely comfortable. So it gives her some time to be without the diaper. So, so that is it for this video, all five of my tips and tricks um, for surviving a heat cycle. As always, leave any questions you have in the comments section below, and thank you for watching.